at the outset i would like to uh, thank the organizers astrazeneca and also the shajappa for giving me this opportunity to be there uh, in this forum to present on cll and uh, not taking much of time i would say that i will be just taking through the journey of cll with various staging system and then subsequently how diagnostics plays a role in case of stratification of the cll patients uh, i will just you know brief through all those things as we uh, all know that the knowledge of cll has progressively deepened in the last 40 years and the diagnosis of cll is usually suspected when you have a blood count showing uh, absolute lymphocyte count of 5 into 10 to the power of 9 per liter and this should be present for more than 3 months of duration as defined by the international uh, guidelines for cll and the circulating peripheral blood smear which usually shows this neoplastic leukemic cells are characterized by mature appearance what exactly is the mature appearance is presence of minimal amount of cytoplasm a condensed chromatin absence of nucleoli this usually characterizes the mature appearance so when we see that this are circulating peripheral lymphocytes we need to prove the clonality of the cells and the clonality is usually proven by immunophenotyping which is carried out by flow cytometry and the important antigenic expression profile what we see in case of cll patients is expression of strong cd5 23 and a decrease or dim expression of surface immunoglobulin cd20 and cd79 which are usually dimly expressed so there was a, a big harmonization in uh, greece in 2018 where they said that presence of 5 19 20 23 and surface kappa lambda is more than enough for diagnosis of cll um, but again there are certain instances where you might have to add certain markers to differentiate and you know come to a diagnosis of cll particularly in uh, the markers which are used are cd200 cd43 cd81 a new marker called as ror1 these are the various markers which help in arriving a diagnosis of cll again what we see that there are numerous instances where we come across a different hematological neoplasm as a lymphoproliferative uh, disorders presenting as the leukemic presentation where the levels of antigen expression and the intensity of uh, uh, the antibody you know expression makes a difference and it helps in arriving a diagnosis of a clonal b cell disorder for instance if we see a cll and mantle cell lymphoma they can be overlapped they, they both are cd5 positive and they can be you know overlap morphologically but important thing what we need to uh, look into is that uh, there is usually a dim expression of surface immunoglobulin and 20 in case of cll but in mantle cell lymphoma what we see is the bright antigenic expression of cd20 and surface immunoglobulin so a level of uh, immunoglobulin expression and the antigenic uh, intensity usually define the various uh, blood uh, uh, clonal b cell disorders some possible risk factors for cll have emerged although the underlying triggers are poorly understood cll as we all know that it is twice common in case of men than in women with a sex ratio of 1.5 to 2 the incidence of cll is higher in caucasians than the other racial groups less common in asian population especially in china japan than in caucasian population a family history of cll or other lymphoproliferative disorders may be a risk factor for instance 5 to 10% of these patients with cll report a family history of malignancy the um if we look at this slide we see that the the classic uh, the, usually the stratification of this sorry there are various models for a staging of the cll and uh, which take into different uh, risk factors into account and during last uh, four to five decades we have seen that it has been evolving the classic uh, thing has been the ray and binet staging which was established in uh, 40 years back where uh, they are widely used as conventional staging system in clinical practice and this is based on the physical examination including peripheral blood lymph node liver spleen bone marrow however it has to be remembered that these two staging systems fail to discriminate among the patients at an early stage 
those who will experience an aggressive disease course. Subsequently, in 2007, MD Anderson group has come up with a nonogram uh, to predict the overall survival for CLL patients. But again, it was in 2014 and 2016 where German group and the CLL International Prognostic uh, Group are just not the clinical features and the biochemical parameters, but also they have considered under the uh, various molecular abnormalities to, uh, to define the patients. So when it was compared with the nomogram proposed by MD Anderson group, the CLL IPI induced, included the cytogenetic abnormalities was confirmed to have higher prognostic value in overall survival and the time to first treatment for newly diagnosed patients. When we go for the clinical staging system, Rye and Binet still remains the first approach in case of identifying asymptomatic patients that are, are, are usually require an active surveillance, as well as those with an advanced disease in simple and very, uh, you know, an inexpensive way. So the RAI system, which is usually uh, more often used in USA and India, it is based on evaluation of lymphocytosis, lymphoid tissue enlargement, anemia, and thrombocytopenia, and it's staged into zero to four, whereas the Binet system, more often used in Europe, is based on evaluation of lymphadenopathy, anemia, and thrombocytopenia. Having said that, there is issue with the Binet and RAI system. There is inability of both staging system to predict disease progression in early stage patients. And there has been an inter search for intense search for the various factors that could do a prediction of eternal course of early uh, prediction of CLL. So there, uh, the thing was that the CLL IPI prognostic index was taken into account and it, uh, the risk category is so defined into four types, the low risk, intermediate risk, high risk, and very high risk. As I was telling that, uh, for early prediction in case of, uh, uh, for the disease, in case of, uh, uh, you know, like early stage patients where the disease progression is rapid, CLL IPI has been used prospectively on Bennett stage A and RISE stage uh, 0 to 2 to predict the time to first treatment. If you see the probability of remaining free from therapy at five years in low risk is around 80 to 85 percent, whereas intermediate risk is 66 to 68 and high risk is around 34 to 46%. Apart from that, the uh, staging system of Binet and Ray have limited prediction for uh, the uh, power for regarding the response to treatment, while CLL and IP can predict the both progression-free survival and overall survival, and can be used in varieties of chemoimmunotherapeutic approaches. So now the CLL IPI will allow more individualized management of patients with uh, uh, CLL in clinical practice and in trials testing the novel drugs. If we see that uh, both the uh, Binet and clean, uh, in the ray can give a good uh, estimate of patient prognosis, uh, the 10-year median survival in case of uh, Binet stage A and zero stage in case of uh, Rai is around 10 years or so. Whereas in case of, if you try, uh, try to take the Binet stage B and Rai stage one and two, it is around uh, median survival for around uh, five to seven point five years, whereas in case of Binet uh, stage three C and whereas uh, Rise stage three uh, and four, uh, the median survival is around two to three point five years. So now the CLL IPI, which combines the genetic, biochemical, and clinical parameters into four prognostic subgroups, we if we see here that the the five year survival is significantly different from the overall survival what we have been seeing. So in uh, way the Ray and Binet staging system was used in cooperation of uh, in IPI, the uh, various you know biochemical and uh, genetic factors have really mattered a lot. The prognostic, in the last 30 years, if we try to see that there is a uh, a lot of you know like the, the things about the prognostic markers stepping up in the CLL and the important prognostic markers in the chronic lymphocytic leukemia it's in varied from serum markers to flow cytometry to IGHV mutation status microRNA chromosome aberrations and gene mutations which has contributed to the prognosis so what they have done is 
the physical significance of this predictive biomarker PLL has a real played an important role with deletion uh, 17 PRP53 mutation notch one mutation CD49 IGHV mutation phases and complex karyotype and micro RNAs were reported to have a predictive value to guide the clinical decisions of genetic factors the prognostic groups have been categorized into uh, four groups a very high risk high risk intermediate risk and low risk the very high risk are associated with deletion 17p rpt53 mutation and bairc3 mutation whereas high risk is associated with deletion 11q rtm mutation and notch one mutation and sf3b1 mutation whereas intermediate risk is associated with trisomy 12 normal karyotype and fish and low risk with isolated uh, deletion 13q so when we come to see the mutation and the frequency in case of cll uh, the mutated ighv and deletion 13q are the most commonest one which account for 50 to 60% and they carry a good proportion but if we take a uh, uh, unmutated ighv h complex karyotype deletions in 11q and notch mutations and deletion 17p and recurrent balance uh, balance translocation are usually carrying the adverse prognosis so there are various biological factors which affect the prognosis in the patient chromosomal abnormalities offer further insight into disease progression and prognosis and the prevalence is dependent on whether the patients are previously untreated or have a relapsed refractory disease typically what we uh, analyze is the in cll patient is 16q 11q deletion to uh, trisomy 12 17p deletion and 13q deletion if we see that when uh, the patient survival is uh, monitored along with that of the adverse cytogenetic abnormality with the pp53 mutations carries an adverse prognosis followed by 11q deletion whereas uh, trisomy 12 carries an intermediate prognosis a patient with normal karyotype and deletion 13q does not have uh, that bad prognosis so how are these genetic aberrations detected in cll Uh, the genetic aberrations are detected by various techniques the karyotyping fluorescent in situ hybridization and now the sequencing technology which involves sagar sequencing and next gen sequencing uh, historically we all know that karyotyping it's uh, usually um, uh, in case of cll had been a very bad thing because the cll uh, cells are mature and you don't get good metaphases but with recent advances with the stimulation techniques the cells goes directly into the cycle and then you can analyze the patient with karyotyping and it has an important bearing when the patient has a complex karyotype i'll be coming to what exactly is meant by complex karyotype in my next slides subsequently as uh, during the course when the karyotyping was difficult in last 20 years or so the fluorescent in situ hybridization has become an important technique for detection of uh, the uh, cytogenetic abnormalities and the four cytogenetic abnormalities which are commonly detected by fish as i was telling 17 13 11 and trisomy uh, 12 is usually uh, detected by fish technology so it uh, has become a mandatory kind of thing to have this uh, fish with this four pros for uh, uh, assessing the recurrent genetic abnormalities which is seen in case of cll as i was uh, talking about how uh, the conventional cytogenetics used to be an historic thing where you never used to get good metaphases but now the chromosomal aberrations are usually picked in 40 to 50% of cases and uh, Uh, which is really good supported by means of fluorescent in situ hybridization to identify the aberration in case of 80% of cases using disease specific process one more thing what we have uh, come across now recently is another important issue of genetic risk stratification in cll was identifying this mutation status of immunoglobulin variable heavy chain genes as uh, the slide shows that uh, the, the cytogenetic complexity which is uh, something like a biological puzzle, uh, puzzle for an underlying clinical 
mathematics aggressiveness in CLL. First, it is important to know what exactly is meant by complex stereotype. The complex stereotype is defined as stereotype having more than three psychogenic abnormalities, which could be structural or numerical. Um, but again, in CLL, in various uh, debate about uh, the cytogenetic abnormalities, whether to take the three, uh, more than three as complex karyotype or the significance of more than five has to be taken into credit uh, to call it as a complex karyotype. There was a larger study which was carried uh, out and they have studied around 6,000 uh, patients or so and they have seen that the patients with high psychogenic complexity with more than five chromosomal aberrations usually carried a bad prognosis and it was independent of whether the patient had P53 mutation or IGHV mutation at the clinical stage of the disease. So patients with more than five chromosomal aberrations become a bad prognostic in the app in the presence of any of the other things when you we try to assess the patients having cytogenetic abnormalities which are described as an intermediate and high risk uh, patients with usually three aberrations if associated with p53 mutation show bad prognosis similarly with patients with four aberration and p53 shows a bad prognosis so exactly you have to think that uh, more than three chromosomal abnormalities should not be exonomically considered to be unfavorable in case of CLL unless this patient has associated um, P53 mutations. So next once you are through with your thing that comes your P53 aberration and the prognostic value of it. Normally, if we try to see that um, uh, the, this is P53 is usually detected by fish as deletion of 17P and patients with P53 mutations together with deletion should be uh, summarized as an aberration of P, uh, PP50 gene. So in 60% of patients we see that uh, there, there is uh, where there is deletion of PP53, 60% of the patients do have mutations but again there are some 30% of patients where there is uh, no deletion of 17p but there is mutation which is seen across in uh, uh, in p53 gene so it becomes important that these patients apart from being tested for cytogenetics need to be tested for a mutation analysis and the mutation analysis in this patients is quite important because p53 usually the oral survival is very low in patients who are p53 positive So how are we going to detect these patients to, who are having P53 mutation? As there are various technologies, fish, Sanger sequencing, NGS, and genomic arrays, uh, the first and foremost thing which we all are adapted is testing by fish. But as I was telling that there will be cases where 30% of patients will have mutation but no deletion. So it is important that we resort to a technique which is either a Sanger sequencing and NGS. And it is uh, usually the P53 sequencing should cover the axon 4 to 10 and the corresponding DNA binding domain of uh, codons 100 to 30, 300 and oligomerization domain on at codon 323 to 265 is the basic minimum requisite for testing of this uh, P53 mutations. It, uh, the Hamblin et al. and Damley et al. in 1999 uh, separately has uh, shown that unmuted IgH genes are associated with more aggressive course of chronic lymphocytic leukemia when compared to that of the mutated IgH. 20 years after a landmark publication, there is a consensus that somatic hypermutation status of immunoglobulin a variable gene is an important cornerstone for accurate risk stratification and therapeutic decision making in patients with CLL. The uh, 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 IGVH uh, status has traditionally been determined by Sanger sequencing, but there is increasing growing demand that uh, these patients should also be tested by NGS uh, to uh, you know, give a good results. 
So immunoglobulin heavy chain gene, which is a powerful predictor or duration of response and overall survival with chemo immunotherapy, can be in majority of Indian centers is usually done by Sanger sequencing, but it's being instituted that NGS technology will definitely have a good result because in 24% of patients, you can have multiple uh, productive clonality, which is not related to IGVH, which can be studied in patients with CLL. Now, it comes whether the challenge of unavailable IGH mutations stated in case of uh, CLL in resource limited settings. An issue that still needs to be considered relates to the feasibility to investigate all parameters included in CLL prognostic model in context with standard care of CLL patient. A registry with large number of patients across the USA included both uh, academic and community centers showed that 90% of these patients with CLL were not screened for IgH mutation. Even that CLL IPI metas analysis referred to earlier, one third of patients lack this information. So this is, uh, when we see this, this is indeed a matter of concern when it comes to the worldwide applicability of uh, uh, CLL IPI, particularly considering that unmutated IGVH status has major impact on the scoring system because it has a score of two, which is double than that of the clinical stage and uh, uh, age of the patient. So when defining the high risk in MCCM guidelines, as uh, told by Dr. Pawan, uh, the DNA sequencing is important in uh, detecting the TP53 mutation and IGVH mutational analysis is important as uh, when mutated P53 is unfavorable, whereas uh, unmutated IGVH carries a bad prognosis. Coming to flow cytometry, CD38, ZAP70, and CD49D, which is a new marker, has an important role in defining the high risk uh, patients. Whereas interface cytogenetics using FISH technology, uh, the 11Q and 17P are associated with unfavorable prognosis and the complex karyotype which indicates unfavorable prognosis is presence of more than three are equal to three unrelated chromosomal abnormalities in more than one cell on a karyotype. Other factors which are now being seen with associated with high risk CLL are uh, the CD38 expression is an indicator of higher risk CLL and it identifies unmutated IgH tone which can be detected uh, flow cytometry, beta to microglobulin uh, which is associated with greater extent of disease, ZAP70 is associated with disease progression and patients with uh, ZAP70 it can be a predictor for Richards syndrome in case of patients with CLL notch one gene mutation which is seen in around 10 to 15 percent of CLA patient uh, again indicates a, a transformation to a diffuse large B cell lymphoma whereas SS3B1 gene mutation which can be seen in 10 to 15 percent of CLA patients has this functional protein processing and these patients are associated to have resistant to treatment with fluterabine. Uh, not much of extensive studies are being published from India, but there is one such study uh, which is from Chandigarh uh, PGI, where they have studied the genomic alterations in chronic lymphocytic leukemia and their correlation with clinical hematological parameters and progression. And what they concluded was that 65% of patients with CLL has deletion 13Q, which is associated with DLEU2 and DLEU1 RB1 gene deletion, which was the most common compared with the other abnormalities like deletion 11Q and deletion 17P patients presenting with cytopenias and higher Binet stage, while those with deletion 13Q had a longer time to first treatment. To summarize, I would say that deletion 17P, deletion 11Q, that is your ATM and unmutated IGHV status has worse prognosis. Other markers like CD38, SAP70, NOTCH1 and beta2 microglobulin and SS3B1 gene mutations are also associated with high risk. CLL IPI scoring should be used clinically to determine the prognosis. And the current NCCN guidelines define mutated uh, TP53 unmutated IGHV, deletion 17P, deletion 11Q, and complex karyotype as an important prognostic markers for high-risk CLL. Thanks one and all. Thank you very much.